So today we are going to talk about low power vans. <coughs> this is a new category of protocols being developed and um, both of the protocols that we will talk about today are very new. I mean basically I think this is probably the first any university lecture that um, on these. Um, so first we define, actually I'm, not, I'm going to define low power vans later on, but basically the idea is right now if you want to go long distance, the only option is cellular phone and cellular phones are not low power, not good enough for sensors. They are good enough for phones, but not good enough for sensors. Phones cost $500 and so you know sensors cost 5 bucks. So anyway, so th that is the category. You want to go long distance and, um, and a low power. So this chart which you have seen before shows all the protocols that um, are being developed and there are such too many protocols being developed right now for, um, for IoT and um, this probably is the last one. So we will talk about these two which are really common. I have seen I mean, in some sense I will show you why they are important and then rest will be left I suppose for future generations. So 11AH, this is also called Wi-Fi Halo, alright, and um, so this is just on the horizon in the sense that this is a standard which has not yet come out of IEEE and so there are no products but it is just on the horizon in the sense that I have the version of the draft 5 which you know draft 6 will probably become the final version and will come out in few months. Once it comes out there will be a lot of products. Generally we have seen the same thing in 60 gigahertz that the by, by wireless HD was the leading technology 3 years ago but it is no longer there today once 11 AD came out. right? So based upon that experience, I feel that 11AH has a good chance. Although if it doesn't come out within a year, then it has no chance because LoRaWAN is taking over the world. Okay, but LoRaWAN is right now the leading van. Alright, so we'll talk about LoRaWAN for that reason and we'll talk about 11AH because this looks like the future. Okay, so it is IEEE spec for low rate, long range IoT applications. And it is currently in the second sponsor ballot. So basically, in IEEE, when some things are done, then it goes through the external people, sponsor. So I am one of the members in the sponsor ballot actually. It turns out so it goes to the external people and they vote upon it. If some comments come back, those comments have to be resolved. A new ballot has to be done and so it keeps recirculating until everybody is happy with it. So right now it is in the second round. First round passed with some comments, second round maybe second after this round maybe it will be done. So this is the situation right now. And so what is different about this Wi-Fi is that it is not in 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz, it is in 900 band as you call it sub gigahertz. Sub means below gigahertz, below 1 gigahertz. And below 1 gigahertz there are two bands of 700 so that this doesn't run, run in 700. 700 is reserved for something else which we didn't talk about that is called wide spaces. But this runs in 900 megahertz in the United States and every country has different. So Europe has 868, Japan has 916, China has 755, Korea has 913 and so that that basically you know causes a lot of problem because you have to make sure that it runs in all of these bands and um, and every country has a different kind of rules and this applies to both LoRaWAN and this one. But <coughs> being sub gigahertz it has some advantages. I think we had talked about it, I, I forget when, when we talked about what but basically when we talked about some places we talked about that the lower the frequency the farther you can go. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, if we are looking for long distance, we have to look for the lower frequencies, right? And so, it is range is longer than 2.4 gigahertz. Second thing is less congestion obviously, I mean there are not that many things that run at uh, 900 megahertz and better penetration simply because the wavelength it can get into the building much easier than 2.4 or 60 gigahertz cannot even get into the building, right? Higher the frequency 
penetration goes down. So that way it is a good frequency and for bit for IoT it has a low bit rate by design because if you have a high bit rate your distance comes down again. So this is more optimized for distance. Short data transmission so we are not sending large packets. Power savings is most important and MAC efficiency so the number of bits that we can reduce is more important. And the number of devices that we can support is very important so four times more devices than Wi-Fi. So basically this is standard as, you, as I present you some of the ideas you will notice that these are some of the latest ideas for these things. First of all how to optimize for power savings, how to optimize for short transmissions, how to optimize for low bit rate and how to optimize for large number of devices. That's what we are learning. If any 11 age doesn't come through, the next protocol that you will be designing in your own lifetime, you know, will be, will, will build upon these. Okay. And this uses everything else that we know so far because this is the latest plus some new things. So in terms of, I mean, this chart is very straightforward. All it says is as you go down the frequency from 60 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz to 900 to 700, the range goes up. Okay. So I should have put an additional number here as to what the range is. But um, see, you see, this is like a 5 gigahertz is more like a area of a home. It doesn't go all the way home to the home, 5 megahertz. Okay. And um, BGN goes to the home. So it is like more like 30 meters. You know, if you, if you, if you really want, if a large home, then you really want to run on B. Then AH is what we call neighborhood. So like one mile. So if you put it on a post, the whole neighborhood is covered. You can read all the meters in the, in the houses, you know, from a mile away. And this is 11 AF could be almost like 40 miles. So basically the 700 megahertz is the band in which the television televisions used to run. So previously when you had a television and you didn't need any cable, you put an antenna on the top of your house, the television station could be 45 miles away and you had no problem. That is the external antenna. So that is what the band is. Basically we took it away from the televisions and gave it to Wi-Fi. I gave it to actually many applications that, you know, we didn't go through wide spaces, but that is what is called wide spaces, wide spaces. So, we, we, so you know, so, so that is the, that would have been better than 900, but 900 is what is being used right now for all the IoT devices because 700 has certain restrictions as to how you use it, for what you use it and so on and so forth. So, all right. So, for 11AH, you can get... 150 kilobits to 78 megabits. The maximum you can get is 78 megabits with four streams. Four streams means you, you have antennas and at least two on this side, two on the other side that will make it four stream or you have four antennas on this side, one on the other side. So with MIMO, you can get multiple streams. So with four streams, you can get to 78 megabits per second. Most devices will probably not have four streams. So they will be closer to 150 kilobits. And actually what they need is more like one or two kilobits. So they don't really need much because they need to send something and then they sleep for a day. Then they need to send something and they sleep for a day. By the time you have taken the average, the average rate is not that much. Any questions so far? Sample application is neighborhood area network, NAN. And so you have many houses which have gas meters, water meters, power meters, etc, etc. They can all be read by the access point. And um, they can have um, other um, automation devices that um, automate other operations of the city. And then um, you could have sensors through this gateway, basically which translates 15.4G to 11AH. And then you will send it to the data aggregator through a wired network. So this is where the data will end up, maybe in a cloud. Uh, so one new word that you heard to at least two on this slide, HAN and NAN. HAN is the home area network, NAN is the neighborhood area network.